Hello, I'm Jason Jaco from Prince Jacob Production. I'm here with Mela Lee. And uh, you might know her from animes such as Fate Stay Night. She does the voice of Ren Sasaka, or more recently from Vampire Night, she does Yuki Cross. And uh, you went over to New Zealand to promote uh, Vampire Night, right? Yes, I did. We what, went to Auckland. What's the difference? Like, was it? Did you notice any difference between like conventions over there and like over here? You know what? It, no. I, I mean, the otaku everywhere. Um, it's a, it's like a big world community, and so uh, it's almost like being at home. And it's really nice to know that anime is bringing people together from all over the world, not just here in the United States. Or, and there's a great population in Australia and New Zealand, of, of an Asian population. So um, there's a lot of people who really appreciate the art form as well. I went from uh, being on uh, unemployment and thinking I might file bankruptcy, which I didn't have to, um, to being flown to uh, London Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and right here in Charlotte. Um, to meet fans of a job. Like, what other job does that? Because so, you used to work on Wall you. Street, right? I did. I did. I got a really great job working with a Wall Street mortgage firm. But it was right before things started going south in 2006, 2007. And they just stopped paying us. And um, I kept staying. At first they said, instead of every two weeks, we're going to pay you once a month. And then at the end of the month, they said, we're going to pay you once a quarter. And at the end of the three months, at the beginning of April, I kind of realized they weren't going to pay me. And I just flashed my drive and walked out. And I remember, you know, thinking, what am I going to do? And this voice inside was like, I've got it. You're going to be OK. And I got a phone call the next day uh, from an ADR director who asked me if I could do um, voiceover that involved investment banking. And I thought, I can do that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was pretty dark. That I really felt like I was going to disappoint my parents. It was the first time they were really proud of me. And um, it was wonderful to see how the universe had other plans. Um, in 2007, I, I lost my good job. I got a job in voiceover that weekend, actually. And what was exciting is is it was tough to lose a job and lose the income, but uh, it was a year later that I had started to make a living as a voiceover artist. And uh, I was so excited that something that I had treated more like a hobby or, or you know, a love um, was now becoming my career. And I was so excited when they called me and asked me if I wanted to go to Baltimore with Tony Oliver, who's directed me in um, several things. And we had done Gerd and Logan that season. So it was really an exciting time for me. So I think for like a lot of people that are aspiring to be voice actors should hear something that you said in your panel about when you did uh, an audition for Vampire Princess Miyu. Oh, what, yeah. what happened there? Um, my first audition um, for uh, an anime or an animated series really was Vampire Princess Miyu. And they needed someone, they wanted someone who looked like the character. Um, so they originally had um, asked for someone with long brown hair and kind of a smoky voice. And I knew I could do that. But I was so excited to be at the audition. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so excited to be there. And they said, uh, thank you. You're not really right for this part. Could you hold on a minute? And I was crushed. And um, they were talking you know, behind the glass. You can only hear them if they push the button. So they took their hand off the button and leaned in and went, Ash is really wrong for this part. And I could tell it wasn't good. And then they came back on and said, Mela, could you read for something else? And it was a redheaded, um, kind of a younger girl that was very excited. And I read one line. And they just said, uh, yeah, thank you. And again, I was crushed. I thought, well, this is my big chance. And I went out to the car, and I, I was about to cry. But I called my manager, who had sent me out on the audition. And he said, Mel, 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 it's OK. Uh, I'm, I'm on the other line with the producers. They cast you in the lead of a different series. And it was for St. Tail, uh, for Tokyo Pop. And that's how I got my story. So that just shows that you know, no matter what happens, something else good can happen you know, in a split second. It does. So not everything uh, works out perfectly the first time you do things. No. So I think that's what people need to learn. You shouldn't be distraught like if you audition for one role and you don't get it. Right. So my first anime was a lead. And then from 2001 to 2005 or 2006, it was only tiny parts. Um, Bang Zoom and, and um, Bandai would call me. And I was just excited. That's why I kind of treat it like a hobby. Um, I looked up to to people like Yuri Lowenthal and Crispin Freeman um, that I, I work with sometimes, and uh, Sandy Fox was a good friend of mine, and just kind of cheered me on. But it did take five years 
before I booked another lead, and it was Rin in Fate Say Night and Shinku and Rosen Maiden in the same year. So you also sing, right? I do. I What's do. the name of your band? Uh, Magnolia Memoir. And what do you guys perform at? Um, well, we just finished a tour in Australia and New Zealand, um, but we, we mostly perform in Los Angeles. We're, we're working on our next project, um, a new album. Uh, but we've been lucky enough to perform in um, England, the States, um, and then Australia and New Zealand. And you can get that on iTunes, right? Yes, you, uh, magnoliamemoir.com, and you can find out everything on, about the band. Uh, and of course, we're on iTunes as well, so uh, Magnolia Memoir. And you did a holiday CD too, right? Oh, we did. A it's, couple um, tracks. Yeah, we did a three-song EP. It's still available on the website right now for free. Um, but if you'd like other free music, you can just go to magnoliamemoir.com slash free music. So we made it really easy for you. All right, so I've asked a lot of people this question because a lot of people have been recently going back in the roles that they've already did before for mm -hmm. movies or TV series has been redone, like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood uh, and stuff like that, where they had to step in. And I've talked to like Vic when he had to redo Edward Elric. He was scared because he said that was his baby. Uh, he put it on the shelf. He felt like he did it the best he could do, and he really didn't want to take it back. Now you just recently had to do Rinta Saka over again for the Unlimited Blade Works movie. What was it like stepping in and doing her again? Um, it was interesting because they they had a, a different characterization of her. Um, same director though, and so she uh, d directed me in a, in a way that uh, it was a little bit more like the manga. Um, and we're crossing our fingers for um, another season uh, of uh, Fate Stay Night. You want to do the prequel, don't you? Um, cross my fingers, fans. Go ahead and tell them. Um, is there anything you're working on now that you're actually allowed to talk about that fans might not know about? Video games or anime wise that's been announced. Thanks for for reminding people that sometimes we, we have these great projects and we're so excited and yeah, we have to sign the confidentiality yeah. agreements right away. Yes. Um, I uh, goodness. The one thing it's already out is Nura, Rise of, of the Yokai Clan. And um, so that's out and we're working on that. Um, the rest of it I can't really talk about. The rest about. of it's under contract, you can't talk <laughs> about it. That's a question you're not supposed to ask people. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say to your fans? Thank you. Thank you. Really. Um, people ask me, is it as awesome as it seems? Uh, is it a great career? And it's really the best career in the whole world. Um, you're surrounded by people that you would actually be friends with. The engineers are fantastic. The directors are fantastic. And the fans are so intelligent and personable. And um, I'm kind of proud of of the community that's into anime and 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 the cross-cultural and cross-generational um, grouping that it is and the kindness you guys have shown I me. I think in the last 10 years the work environment has changed but there was a moment where you either went to college or you didn't and there was a stigma of of you know education whatever job you had defined you and I think if there's one good thing that's come out of the financial distress that we have here in the United States is that your job doesn't define you. And um, there's been a lot of opportunities. You know, if somebody's slinging pizza, you, you're fully aware of the fact they could be directing you tomorrow. Yeah. And especially in Hollywood, there's a great community right now because everybody's doing whatever they can. So your best friend, I, I was parking cars for a minute. You know, I was working for Valet of the Dolls, which is hot, hot girls who can drive stick shift. Um, it's, it's a different place. It's a kinder place. Um, and it's just... If anybody wants to get into voiceover or acting or Hollywood, um, now is a good time. There's a lot of exciting things happening right there. Well, thank you very much for doing this interview with me. I You're appreciate welcome. it. You have a good rest of the con. I will. Thank you. Cut.
she planned it She's the perfect criminal, you're the perfect crime Leaning in and out of the window She's smiling cause she knows